To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Right children, now we are going to start the next chapter of the lesson. So this is using thermometer correctly. So under this chapter, we are going to learn how to handle the thermometer, how to take the readings correctly under different instances. Okay. So using thermometer correctly, there are a few steps given here. We will go through them. The thermometer should be held vertically so that the bulb of the thermometer is well in contact with the substance or the liquid of which the temperature should be measured. Okay, children. So let's say that if you are going to measure the temperature of a certain, let's say the liquid sample, if it's water. So if this is water, you have to place the thermometer vertically like this. If you place it to the other side, it's not correct. Only vertically you have to place the thermometer like this. Right, and the other thing is, even though it's not mentioned here, remember. So the bulb of the thermometer should be immersing in the substance that you are going to take the temperature of. Right, let's say that if you are going to partially immerse the bulb in water like this, let's say if part of the bulb is outside and only part of it is inside, this is wrong. The entire bulb of the thermometer should be immersed in the substance. Right. Uh, it can be a soil sample, it can be another substance, another liquid other than water, right? Anyway, the bulb should be completely immersed in the particular substance, right? And the other thing is you have to make sure when you immerse this thermometer, it should not touch the walls or the bottom of the vessel that the substance is contained, right? So in that way, you cannot, the bulb cannot feel the correct thermometer. Uh, of the substance that you are going to take the temperature of. Right children? So the thermometer should be held vertically so that the bulb of the thermometer is well in contact with the substance or liquid of which the temperature should be measured. Okay? So when taking the readings, the thermometer should be adjusted to the eye level. Look at this picture. This is the eye level. Now you all can see this is where the um, mercury column is at 20. Right? The mercury column is at 20 at the moment. So when you are taking the reading, you have to take your eye levels. You have to bring the eye levels as it's aligned with this mercury column. Right? So if you are going to uh, look at the thermometer like this or like this, that is wrong. You cannot take the correct reading in these two instances. Right? When taking the reading, the thermometer should be adjusted to the eye level. You have to either move down or you have to bring the entire setup up and you have to take the reading correctly. Number three, the eye should be kept correctly in line with the mercury column as shown in the figure. You have to bring your eyes to the level of the mercury column and then only you are going to take the reading. Okay, children, right? Observe below, above is incorrect. From here or here, that is not correct. So you cannot take the correct reading because these are very sensitive readings. You all can see there are so many other parts calibrated here, right? There are tiny lines and all. So when you look from above or below, you will not see the exact line, exact reading that where the mercury column is at. Okay, children. We'll move on to the next. We have this assignment. Find out the factors that should be considered when using a thermometer and make a report. Okay, you have to make a report. Remember, these are the main things that you have to consider. Other than that, we will write the other two uh, points that I explained here. Right. So you have to make a report. When you make the report, you don't you can make a full report so that you will improve your knowledge also different types of thermometers, 
what are the liquids present in the thermometers, what are the scales of thermometers. You can include those small factors as well. You can make a full report of this, right? So we will write those other two points that I mentioned earlier. The bulb of the thermometer, the bulb of the thermometer, should be completely immersed in, completely immersed in the substance or the liquid. That we are, we will simply write down that also. That we are going to measure the temperature of. The bulb of the thermometer, the bulb of the thermometer should not touch the walls or the bottom. of the container of the substance, of the container of the substance or the liquid. The bulb of the thermometer should be completely immersed in the substance or the liquid. So the liquid that we are going to take the temperature of, right? And the bulb of the thermometer should not touch the walls or the bottom of the container of the substance or the liquid, right? So otherwise, we cannot measure the correct temperature of the particular substance. Okay, children, we'll move on to the next. So for extra knowledge, it's given. For the protection of the thermometer, it should be selected in such a way that the measuring temperature should be within the temperature range of that thermometer. So when you look at the thermometer, in the labs we use certain types of thermometers. At home, in order to measure the body temperature, we use another type of thermometer, right? So different types of thermometers based on the, uh, based on the necessity, they have different temperature ranges. Right now we are going to learn about the thermometer that we use the body temperature with, that is known as the clinical thermometer. So compared with the other thermometers, its temperature range is shorter, right? So we should not use those type of temp thermometers to measure the higher temperatures. It will damage the thermometer, right? Because particular certain thermometers are designed to measure that particular temperatures of that relevant substance. Okay, children, therefore we have to be careful of that as well, okay? So then we have to do this activity. Activity is taking the reading of a thermometer correctly. Now I explain you all how to measure the temperature of a substance correctly. Okay, so we are going to do this activity in the lab now. It's very easy, okay? So what do we need to do this activity? We need a beaker. And we need water, sample of water, thermometer, and a laboratory stand. Right? So how to do this activity? Look at this, we will label this laboratory stand, 
speaker, water, thermometer. Laboratory. Thermometer. Beaker. And water. So place the bulb of the thermometer in the middle of the water and clamp it vertically. You have to make sure the bulb of the thermometer is completely immersed in water. We are going to take the temperature of water here. Right? So the bulb of the thermometer should be completely immersed in water and at the same time it should not touch the sides or the walls or the bottom of the beaker. Okay? It should be covered only with water. Right? So place the bulb of the thermometer in the middle of water and clamp it vertically. Right? It should be vertically straight and it should be clamped to this laboratory stand. Okay? Observe the level of the mercury column and take the reading accurately as shown in the above figure. Right? You have, you have to take the reading by taking your eye in level with the mercury column. Is it correct if you take the reading by looking from here or down? No. Right? Your eye should be aligned with the level of the mercury column. Okay, children. So I already explained you all how to take these readings. Now in the lab, I will show you how to do this very simple activity. Right, children. Now I'm going to show you all how to use a thermometer correctly. Right, children. So in order to measure the temperature accurately, there is a certain way that we have to use this thermometer. Now here I will show you how to measure the temperature of this water sample. So this is the same activity we have to do in the next uh, practical, okay? Right, therefore observe very carefully. So this is the first thing. When you take the reading of a certain sample, certain substance, right? What you have to do? You have to first keep the thermometer vertically, right? And look at this bulb of the thermometer, children. At the moment, you all can see the bulb is nicely covered with water, which means when you immerse this thermometer in the substance or the liquid that you are going to measure the temperature of, the bulb should be covered with the substance. Bulb should be completely covered with the liquid in this case. Right? The entire bulb should be covered with the liquid. Okay? So only if part of the bulb is covered, we cannot measure the temperature accurately. Right? So you all can see at the moment, the bulb of the thermometer is nicely covered with water. Right? The entire bulb is immersed in water. Right, children? The other thing is, the bulb should not touch the walls of the beaker. Walls or the bottom of the beaker. Right? Other than the substance that you are going to take the measurement of. So you are going to read the temperature of water. So the bulb should touch only the amount of water. It should not touch anything else. Not the walls, not the bottom of the beaker. Right, children? So how to take the measurement, children? You all can see the calibrated part is this side. It is not towards my side. So if I am going to take the reading, first of all, you have to turn the calibrated part, the number side to your side well. Right? Now I can see the numbers well. Now can I take the reading like this? If I am going to look at the thermometer like this and take the reading, that is completely wrong. So how to do it correctly? Remember children, when you are taking the reading of a certain substance, what do you have to do? Your eye should be in line with the mercury level. Now this is a mercury thermometer. There are alcohol thermometers as well. So when you take the reading, your eye, eye should be in line with the liquid column. So in that case, as this thermometer is already clamped to this uh, laboratory stand, I can't move it anymore. What I have to do is I have to go down till, uh, till my eyes are in line with the mercury column, right? So how to do that? Like this. 
Now I can say very clearly the liquid level. It is at 24, 24 degrees Celsius. Okay, children. So if I am going to do it like this, no, I cannot take the correct reading. It's not accurate. So to take the correct reading, I must go down till my eyes are in line with the mercury column here. Right, children? So I hope you understood how to measure the uh, temperature of substances using thermometer correctly. Right, children. So you observed how to measure the temperature of this water sample correctly. So I hope you understood that part well, right? So we have this assignment to do. Measure the temperature of air in some places like under a large tree, open air with a lot of sunlight, near a water body. Tabulate your readings. So you have to go to these different places and you have to now, in order to measure the air temperature, you must have seen sometimes in uh, different places, in science labs, you must have seen uh, there are uh, thermometers fixed to the wall actually they can measure the temperature of air so you need a thermometer like that in order to measure the temperature of air like this so measure the temperature of air in some places like under a large tree open air with lot of sunlight near a water body right different places you can you can do this as a group activity at school okay with a group of students your other friends you can go to a different different places and you can uh, measure the temperature so one group can go to one place the other group can go to the other place likewise also you can do this very simple activity so how to do this activity we can tabulate tabulate means you have to include the readings in a table so it's very simple here only three places are given you can uh, go to many other places too. So, you can write here the place and the temperature. And at the same time, make sure all the places temperature should be uh, taken, measured at the same time. Okay, children, because uh, throughout the day, the temperature changes. Let's take, if you take the temperature of air under a large tree in the morning and if you take another place near a water body during the daytime, it would be completely different from each other. So therefore, you have to make sure you take all the temperatures at the same time period. Okay, children? Okay. So, we will write here place under a tree. Under a tree. Under a large tree. So under a large tree, what can you expect children? You know that because of the shade, the air temperature will be lower than the other places, other than the open areas. Right? Under a large tree, normally temperature is lower. That's why when you go under a large tree, under the shade, we feel cool. Right? Number two, open air with sunlight open air with sunlight with sunlight so probably this place will have the highest temperature right and here near a water body near a water body Right, so near water body also, you can uh, observe the temperature. If the water body is present in a shady area, the temperature will be lower than the other areas. Okay, so you can find other places also. So there are different, different places uh, that you can select, right, according to the number of groups that you are going to divide. You can simply do this as a group activity too. Okay, children, so you have to measure the temperature. Make sure you measure the temperature at the same time period. Okay, so if you measure the temperature here in the morning, these also should be measured in the morning, right? Here, if you measure the temperature during daytime, other places also should be the same, okay? Or maybe you can do it in a different way also. Temperature, you can divide it like this according to the time also, right? Let's say here you can write 10 a.m. 
11 a.m. 12 a.m. So you can uh, check how these temperature changes throughout the day also. Okay. So you can be creative and do these type of activities very easily. Right children. We will move on to the next. So the next activity here also we are going to measure the temperature of a soil sample correctly. Okay. Measuring the temperature of the soil. So how to do this activity? We will write down. We need a beaker. We need a thermometer. Thermometer. And we need a soil sample. Soil. So even this activity you can take from different different places and can do the same activity also. Okay. So the method. We will label this thermometer, beaker, soil. Thermometer, beaker, soil. Right, children? So fill the beaker with soil. And dip the bulb of the thermometer well in the soil. Now we know that when you are going to measure, a te measure the temperature of a certain substance, the bulb of the thermometer should be completely covered with that particular substance. Right? And the bulb should not touch the sides or the bottom of the beaker or the vessel. Right children? And then after some time you have to wait for about a minute and then you have to Take the reading. So how do you take the reading children? You have to bring your eye level to this uh, level, mercury level of the thermometer and then only you are going to take the reading. Right? So how do you do this? If this is your level of the mercury column, you have to bring your eye in level with that and then take the reading. Right? And at the same time, are we going to now after uh, leaving it for some time in soil, are we going to take the thermometer out and do the reading? The moment you take out this thermometer bulb, the mercury column drops. Therefore, we are not going to do that. While this thermometer bulb still being inside this soil, in contact with soil, we are going to take the reading. Okay, children? We'll do this activity now. Right, children? Now we are going to measure the temperature of a soil sample. Right now you know what is the correct method of measuring temperature of any substance. Okay. Now I brought this uh, soil sample from a place where there is plenty of sunlight. Let's check what you have to do. You all know that you have to immerse the thermometer in the soil sample as if the bulb is nicely covered with soil. Right. I will do with this now. Okay, now the bulb is entirely covered with soil. The bulb should not touch the walls of the beaker or the bottom. It should in contact only with soil at this time. First of all, I will check the temperature in the correct way. So you all know that I have to go down uh, as my eyes are in line with the uh, liquid column, right? Right. So... It is about 38 children, 38 degrees Celsius. I told you all this sample was taken from a place where there is plenty of sunlight. Check whether you all can see. Can you all see children? The temperature is at 38 degrees Celsius. So at school you can take soil samples from different places right from a place where there is a lot of shade like from under a tree and you can take a soil sample from where there is a lot of sunlight right likewise you can take different types of soil samples and you have to observe the temperature and you will realize that the temperature won't be the same right i hope you understood how to measure the temperature of a soil sample okay so we have this other assignment too. This is similar to the previous assignment. Measure the soil temperature in the following places and tabulate the readings. Right? Tabulate the readings. 
under a large tree, in a dry place, in a place with sandy soil, in a place with high moisture content. So this activity also you can do as a group activity at school and then uh, you have to include all the readings in a table. Right now I explained you all how to do collect soil samples or you can go to without collecting soil samples you can go to that particular places and you can do those activities okay without uh, bringing the soil samples to the lab. It's more accurate when you do the activity like that. So the place, temperature of soil, temperature. Right. Again, under a large tree, under a large tree, in a place with sandy soil, in a place with sandy soil, then in a dry place. can write the other one also and you can add other places as well okay children so when you do this activity you will realize the temperature difference in different places okay you can take the soil sample so probably when you take soil from under a large tree what happens children the soil will be moist okay so in a dry place without water soil will be dried up and therefore the temperature will be higher so therefore, temperature of this place will be higher than that of the first place. Okay, so you have to do this activity to understand this better, children. Right, children, we'll move on to the next. Now we are going to learn about the clinical thermometer. Why do we use the clinical thermometer, children? The clinical thermometer is used to measure the body temperature. Okay, so look at this picture, children. There are some parts that we have to study in the clinical thermometer. So what are the differences of this clinical thermometer than uh, that of the thermometers we use in the lab children? So the main difference is this is way more shorter than the other thermometers we use in the lab. Okay, so in the lab to do our experiments we use a longer thermometer but the clinical thermometer is shorter. What is the reason? Because the temperature range is shorter. Okay children? And at the same time, there is another importance, right? Another difference. When you consider the other thermometers, starting from the bulb, from the to take the liquids throughout, there is a capillary tube connected in all the thermometers, right? So this capillary tube is straight in the other thermometers. But in the clinical thermometer, there is a fine bend at the beginning of this capillary tube from the bottom area. Right at the beginning of this capillary tube where it connects to the bulb, there is a fine bend. I will explain what is the importance of this fine bend of the capillary tube. Okay, so here special features of a clinical thermometer, there is a fine bend in the capillary tube. There is a fine bend in the capillary tube containing mercury. Okay, so the next one is the temperature range is short. Okay, temperature range is short. It start, it's starting from 35 degrees Celsius to 43 degrees Celsius. Now, when we uh, use the thermometers in the lab, it starts from zero, right? And it goes up, right children? So, the temperature range is short, 35 degrees Celsius to 43 degrees Celsius. Okay, children? So, the clinical thermometer is used to measure the body temperature, okay? Now, how to measure the body temperature using this clinical thermometer correctly? By measuring body temperature by using the clinical thermometer. First, wash the bulb of the thermometer with an antiseptic solution. Why antiseptic solution? What is the reason? Let's go through this, we will understand this, okay? First, wash the bulb of the thermometer with an antiseptic solution. You have to clean the bulb with antiseptic solution. Keep the bulb of the thermometer, number two. Keep the bulb of the thermometer under the tongue of the patient for about two minutes. 
right under the tongue because we are going to keep it under the tongue. Before we keep something inside the mouth, we have to destroy the germs. That is why we have to clean the bulb with an antiseptic solution in order to destroy the germs present in the bulb of the thermometer. Keep the bulb of the thermometer under the tongue of the patient for about two minutes. Okay, but remember only adult patients only uh, and the big children also we can use the same method. But very small children, we never use this method. So what is the reason we don't use this method for babies? Why do you keep the thermometer under their armpits without keeping under the tongue? In case they bite, what will happen children? They will get exposed to mercury. Mercury is a toxic substance. Okay. So keep the bulb of the thermometer under the tongue of the patient for about two minutes. Number three. Remove the thermometer from the mouth and take the reading accurately while holding it vertically. Holding it vertically. So you have to take the thermometer out. Now earlier I explained you all. Now I, when I was explaining about how to measure the temperature of a soil sample, I told you all when you are taking the reading, you never take the thermometer out. You have to leave the thermometer inside while the thermometer is still, the bulb is still covered with soil, you have to take the reading. What is the reason? Now here you have to take it out of the mouth then you have to take the reading. So earlier I told you all, when you take, the moment you take the thermometer out of the soil sample, out of any sample and if you are trying to measure the temperature, that mercury color drops or falls down. And you cannot take the exact correct temperature. But here what happens? You have to when you take the uh, thermometer out of the patient's mouth or the baby's armpits and then you have to hold it vertically and take the reading. So won't that happen? Won't the mercury column go down like before? That won't happen. The re reason is because of the presence of this fine bend. Now normally when you take the reading of the patient, we cannot, it's very difficult while the uh, thermometer bulb is still inside the patient's mouth, it's very difficult to take the reading. Therefore, what we are going to do is, we are going to take it out and take the reading. So if we use a normal thermometer, the moment we take it out of the sample or uh, whatever the substance that we are going to take the reading of, the temperature drops because the bulb is exposed to outer environment. Right, according to the outer environment's temperature, the temperature of the or the level of the mercury column drops. Okay, children. But here it will not happen. What is the reason, children? Because of the fine bend, it takes time for this mercury column to go down. Right? So here, if this is the mercury column, if this is the mercury column, because of the presence of this fine bend. Right from here onwards, mercury column cannot go down instantly. Right? This gives us a little time, adequate time to take our reading properly. Right? When you take the thermometer out of the patient's mouth and when you hold it like this vertically, the mercury column will not instantly go down because of the presence of the fine bend. Right? This gives us a little time to take the reading. Okay, so that is the importance of presence of this fine bend. So remove the thermometer from the mouth and take the reading accurately while holding it vertically. Okay, so here again body temperature of small babies can be measured by keeping the bulb of the thermometer under their armpits for a few minutes. Okay, this is important. We already discussed this one. There is a fine bend in the capillary tube of the clinical thermometer. It prevents the mercury column from rising up or falling down before taking the measurements. It takes time to do that. Right? So it prevents the mercury column from rising up or falling down before taking the measurements. Right children? So look at these diagrams. This is the fine bend right here fine bend is there. Okay, so in this picture you can see very clearly this is the fine bend. 
Okay, children. Therefore, the reading of the temperature can be kept unchanged because of this reason. Even after the thermometer is removed from the mouth of the patient, the thermometer should be shaken well at the same time. Let's say that if you need to take the body temperature of several patients at the same time, what do you have to do after taking one person's temperature? Now, because of the presence of the fine bend, mercury column will not go back even if you take it out of the, I mean, even if you take the thermometer out of the patient's mouth, right? Mercury column will not go back as before towards the bulb of the thermometer, right? So you can easily take the reading. It will, it will remain unchanged. At the same time, when you are going to take the temperature of the next patient, so before you use the thermometer, the same thermometer on another patient, you have to send this mercury column trapped up. You have to send it back to the bulb. Right? Only starting from the bulb, from the lower part, when you take the next patient's temperature, according to the body temperature of that patient, this mercury column should rise up. Okay? Therefore, how do you send this mercury column back to its bulb? We will see. The thermometer should be shaken well. Right? So if this is the bulb of the, let's say if this is the bulb of the thermometer, if this is the stem, you had to hold it from stem and you have to shake the thermometer well. Okay? When you shake the thermometer well, the mercury column goes back to the bulb area. Right? So the thermometer should be shaken well to send the mercury column down the bend before it is used the next time. Right? If the mercury column is still there above the bend, you cannot measure the next person's temperature properly. Okay, children? Therefore, you have to check the thermometer well. You have to hold from the stem area and the bulb area should be away from you. And then you have to uh, shake from the stem area so that the mercury column will go back to the bulb area. Okay? So assignment is there. Measure and record the body temperature of your family members and some of your friends. Now, this activity is very easy. Even at home, you can do. Nowadays, most of us use the digital thermometers, which is a very easy. Digitally, uh, there's a, a sensor to sense the th temperature of different people. Therefore, it's very easy to read it. Digitally, it appears, right? But if you have, in case if you have a bulb thermometer at home, you can do this activity. You can practice how to take the reading. You can practice how to take measure the temperature correctly of uh, different patients. Okay, children? So measure and record the body temperature of your family members and some of your friends. Okay? So for extra knowledge, body temperature of a healthy person is 36.9 degrees Celsius even before we discuss this. So you can consider even it as 37 degrees Celsius. Right, 36.9 or 37 degrees Celsius is also correct, okay? Or in Fahrenheit scale, it is 98.4 degrees Celsius. 36.9 degrees Celsius or 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? New types of thermometers are invented for measuring body temperature accurately. So, nowadays, Mostly we use these type of digital thermometers. It's very easy to use. We don't have to wait for a long time and it's uh, not difficult. And sometimes if you have a vision problem, sometimes when you get tall, when your vision uh, becomes weaker, it's very difficult to uh, look at the mercury column and check where the mercury column is. Even those type of people can use these type of digital thermometers very easily. Okay, children, we'll move on to the next. We have this other assignment to do. Correct and record information about modern equipment used to measure temperature. So modern equipment we already discussed here. Most of the time nowadays we use these type of digital thermometers. These dig digital thermometers have heat sensors so that it can uh, identify the body temperature of uh, people. Okay. 
So we will write that one first. Digital thermometers. Digital thermometers. So the digital thermometers also you have to keep it uh, in the armpit so under the tongue right uh, you have to the body contact is important they are also right using heat sensors it can identify so have you seen sometimes when you visit places when uh, they check your body temperature uh, with this specific uh, thermometer that thermometer uh, doesn't need to touch your body in order to uh, record your th temperature right there are different types of those type those thermometers also uh, ear thermometer is there right uh, digital ear thermometer or tympanic tympanic membrane like uh, tympanic thermometers also correct digital ear thermometer digital ear thermometer right and uh, forehead thermometers are there the forehead thermometers so these both digital thermo digital ear thermometers and forehead thermometers they don't have to in contact with your body in order to read the temperature right that is because uh, they use by uh, uh, ir radiation infrared radiation right ir sensors are there therefore they can heat the, uh, even uh, away from your body these thermometers can read the body temperature IR technology is used okay and there's another one called pacifier thermometer pacifier thermometers so these type of pacifier thermometers pacifiers are used by babies when babies cry sometimes they give a uh, pacifier into their mouth so these pacifiers some of these type of pacifiers are uh, connected with uh, thermometers are connected so that when they take the pacifier into their mouth the body temperature is recorded okay pacifier thermometer for babies and uh, nowadays there are four apps to measure the temperatures not to measure body temperatures basically to measure the uh, environmental temperature so various apps are there to measure the environmental temperatures right so app based thermometers App based temperature reading. Temperature reading. Right? So there are various methods like this, modern methods like this. Right? So those days we used only bulb thermometers, but nowadays most of the time we use these type of digital thermometers because these are very easy to use and you don't have to. Uh, read it by yourselves okay it displays the temperature digitally therefore it's very easy to use these type of thermometers any person can use them okay children digital thermometers digital ear thermometers forehead thermometers pacifier thermometers and app based them temperature reading methods are also there right children so we have completed this chapter as well. So in this chapter, we learned how to use a thermometer correctly, right? We learn how to use the thermometer correctly in the lab. And also we learn more about uh, the clinical thermometer as well and how to use the clinical thermometer too. So I hope you got a better understanding on how to use the thermometers correctly under this chapter. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.